I don't think I'll beat him though. <laughs> He's got to get a lot of poop hauled. Here's a nice sunset for you on this lovely evening. I do have something coming up this week. All right, what's up? We are starting a new week. Uh, I am not in a manure truck, as you can see. We are still hauling, hauling manure. There's a truck right over here. He's just about finished on this field. I am disking this field. Normally we wouldn't have to disc it, but as you can see, it's a little green, all this stuff. This is volunteer grain. So we cut this field, it was a grain field, and all this is the kernels that fell off that are growing back. So yes, our combine leaks a lot, and that's why we're getting a new one next year. Um, so we tried run the, running the chisel plow through this. Normally that's what we would do. We'd just chisel plow it for spuds for next year. But the chisel plow just keeps plugging up, plugging up because the volunteer has gotten so tall. So we have to disc it. So the disc will kind of chop that up, break it up. So it doesn't, so it'll flow through the chisel plow a lot easier. We won't get the material build up. So I'm out here disking today. I don't think I'll get quite caught up on the disking, but we have seven fields that still need to be chisel plowed before next week, before Thanksgiving because next week, Monday, Tuesday, we probably have good-ish weather, but it's gonna dip, the temperatures are dropping quick. So this, all this ground will be frozen in a week and a half. So we have a week to get seven fields chisel plowed and we are short-handed. So that leaves me to drive the chisel plow. Uh, I'll probably put either Josh or Trevor in the disc if I need them to keep up on the manure if we need it. So turn around here at the end but yeah we got a lot of work to do this week it's gonna be busy a lot of tractor work for me at least got a manure truck over here going basically the same speed as I am They're not really getting any further ahead of me and I'm going 8.7 miles an hour I don't think I'll beat him though <laughs> he's got to get a lot of poop hauled All right, so while I'm in the tractor, I thought I would share with you a few facts about farming in Idaho. So you might think that Idaho just grows a whole bunch of potatoes, and we do, but here are a few other things that we are really good at growing. So in Idaho, and I believe these numbers are just for the United, just for the United States, we are the number one producer of potatoes, one, number one producer of barley, number one producer of peppermint, number one producer of alfalfa hay. We are the number two producer of sugar beets. We are the number two producer of hops. We're the number three producer of milk, number three producer of cheese, number three producer of onions, the number four producer of peas, number four producer of spring wheat, number four producer of lentils, and the number 13 producer of beef. So, farming in Idaho, we feed the world. There's a lot of products that come out of Idaho to make sure that everybody has what they need. So, if you've ever thought about farming and only think about the Midwest and all the dry farms, well, out here in the Rocky Mountains, we grow a lot of crops that feed a lot of people. So, keep watching and we'll, uh, we'll show you more about farming in Idaho. One nice thing about driving tractor late at night though is a lot of times in the fall we get these beautiful sunsets because we get a lot of clouds moving in in the fall, a lot of moisture starts to happen and it tends to lead to some really awesome sunsets. So here's a nice sunset for you on this lovely evening. I got a lot of poop to work up, but at least I got something to look at. All right guys, what's up? It is the next day, so I am now in our big 9510RT John Deere pulling our chisel plow. So this chisel plow does a pretty awesome job. We used to have a big ripper and we would rip really deep, but we talked to a bunch of people, they decided, we basically decided we didn't need the ripper. 
We didn't need to go as deep. We didn't need to have this and the ripper. So this, we are able to work down 12 inches. So since this is going into spuds next year, we're working all the way down to 12 inches to get rid of all the, the truck tracks and the packed areas in the dirt. Because when we plant spuds, we the planters go down about 12 inches. The spud seed itself is down six inches below the dirt. And then we gotta work up at least six, eight inches underneath where the seed is piece is sitting. So we decided that this chisel plow does the best job. We used it, we've been using it like this for the last couple years. And we had probably one of the best yields that we've had on spuds this year than we've had in years. So getting the right equipment, using the right equipment definitely makes a difference. We haven't found anything better than this Lemkin uh, Carotenine Chisel Plow. Uh, it does pull hard. So my John Deere, we're only able to go five miles an hour with this thing. We'd like to be able to go eight. We are looking at some bigger tractors that we could possibly get in the future. But for now, this is what we've got. So it does an amazing job. I'm gonna turn around here on the end and then we'll, we'll keep going. I just started this field, so we have quite a bit to do. So I just turned around, started back again. Sometimes this stubble is a little tall. We decided not to disc this field because it's not as tall as the field I was doing yesterday. Um, but it's still fairly tall, so every once in a while I have to watch because it'll plug up. So you just get so much material that isn't dirt, so the stubble going through the shanks, it'll sometimes form a big ball and it'll just plug up. They just have to lift up and go over it and then back up and go through it again. But it's not doing too bad. I have plugged up a couple times, but I, I haven't seen a chisel plow do as good of this as this one. We used to have an old John Deere chisel plow but it left the field pretty chunky. It even had like a little leveler crumbler thing on the back with a bunch of tines. And it just left the field pretty chunky. It didn't go quite as deep. And the, the shanks weren't as, it didn't have it as adjustable of shanks. So on the bottom of these shanks, there's a point and you can get all different points. So now we have a wide, like four inch wide point that we're going through. And then in the spring, when we go through, we'll go through this same ground again in the spring, but we'll go straight. Right now, I'm kind of at an angle. Um, but in the spring, we'll go through and we'll put a narrow shank, it's like a two inch shank, uh, or not shank, two inch point, and, but it has wings on it. So with the wings on it, it basically makes it so there isn't one piece of dirt that you are not touching under there. So it makes a nice level seed bed for the potatoes or for when the planters come through. You don't get any bouncing with your tractors or planter because it's not like you're going over bumps or anything. So it makes a nice seed bed. Um, I do have something coming up this week. Uh, I was able to get a Fent 1167 demo. That's coming on Wednesday or I guess tomorrow. And then I'm working with the case dealer to try and get the case. I think it's a 580 quad track. And we're going to test those on this uh, chisel plow because we have this big John Deere 9510 but this is actually the smallest of those three tractors so we're gonna have the 9510 and I'm gonna do a video on comparing all of them we're gonna compare the 9510 the 1167 and the case quad track all pulling the same implement see which one pulls it best obviously they're not the same horsepowers but we're gonna do what we can to make it as fair as possible just had to turn around at the end but yeah, we're gonna make it as fair as possible. Granted, they are different horsepowers and they're different engines and stuff, but we're gonna try and compare them on if they were the same. So we know how good our John Deere does pull in this. Uh, this chisel plow pulls really hard. Uh, and this isn't even their biggest, uh, Lemkin's biggest chisel plow. This is the Karat 9 and it is their, I think it's a, four meter or a five meter but they make a six meter so they make one that's about it's three feet wider than this one and it has I think it has two more sets of shanks on it so I think it has six more shanks this one has 18 shanks so it pulls really hard and uh, yeah you need a big tractor to pull this thing so yeah later this week we are going to be testing all those tractors on this implement 
and we'll get a good demo and a good comparison on what pulls it the best. So I'm going to end this video here and I'm going to start working on the next video, which is the big comparison video over here on my seat next to me. I've got my GoPro, I've got my drone. Um, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of shots of everything to try and get a good comparison. We're also going to be looking at the dit or the chisel plow and uh, showing you kind of how it works and how good it does. So look forward to that and I'll see you in the next one.